Welcome back, people. Chris Johnson here, CPA and certified information security professional. This time we have a CPA talk with an amazing guest by the name of Miss Jessica McLean. She's a CPA. She's a CISA. She's a project management professional, I believe that is. PMP um, and a CGFM. Yeah, a certified financial govern. I really should have reviewed what those certifications mean. Again, yeah. just Google this stuff right here. Hold on one second. All right, sorry. Certified government financial manager handling state, federal, local taxes or gov or audit. Not taxes. She actually says she doesn't do tax work. <laughs> All of those letters. We did an interview with Jessica, and it was a great interview. And we got to talk about a lot. We got to talk about studying for the CPA exam and specific things you need to know in order to be effective in your study habit. How the profession is more than numbers. That's why we call calling this one more than just numbers. We talk about how there are so many opportunities in the profession of accounting and it's not just taxes, people. And it's not just financial reporting. As always, we talked about her test taking process and all the sections that she passed, which one she thought was the easiest and which one she thought was the hardest. Take a guess which one she thought was the hardest be a woman in business and some of the undertones that women experience. It's interesting to hear because I'm a man and I don't always understand the things women go through is what my wife says. Oh, we also talked about the National Society of Black Certified Public Accountants, which is a newer nonprofit organization with the goal of getting more African Americans to be CPA. So we talked about uh, that organization, which I am now a recently new minted member, and uh, Jessica has been doing some things for. Without any further delay, the interview with Miss Jessica McLean coming right at you, CPA Diversity. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like the video. Watch it to the end. Make sure you comment. Want to hear your thoughts? Let's go. Welcome to CPA Diversity, another CPA talk series. And today I have a very special guest by the name of Miss Jessica. McLean. She is a CPA, CISA, certified PM, PMP, and CGFM. Yes? A lot of letters. <laughs> a lot of letters. Yes. A lot of letters. <laughs> uh, hi, Ms. McLean. How are you? Welcome to CPA Diversity. I am great, and thank you for having me. <laughs> I'm glad that we can have this time to talk because I think that, um, you know, my goal is to interview more professionals to get an idea of your professional background, your experience, the things that you've gone through to get to where you are today and specifically your experience as someone who's got some diverse ethnic background in the profession of accounting and overall business. Okay. So I'm going to do, I'm going to start this interview just a little bit backwards and then we'll get into some of some of the more formalities, but, um, I want to start. Could you just explain to me what do you think right now has been the most beneficial thing for you working in the profession of accounting currently in your role as a controller, correct? Yes, yes. And, 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 and what's been the most beneficial to your life and in your professional development that maybe somebody might be able to benefit if they chose the same profession? Sure, that's a great question. Oh, wow. So many benefits, I will start off by saying that, but the opportunity that I've had to meet so many great people, um, the accounting profession has great opportunities in various aspects. There's audit, there's tax, um, there's advisory work, there's various industries, there's just enormous opportunity, which is great. And I've met so many great people along the way, whether it's at the jobs that I've worked at, with the volunteer committees I'm a part of, with the AICPA. I have a strong network of people who have been so supportive of, of me, mm -hmm. really needed in this profession, especially as an African-American woman. So that's been very beneficial for me. Good, good. That's good. It sounds like the most thing is that you got a real good, big network of people that you can build from and kind of bounce, I guess, your ideas off of if you wanted to grow professionally and personally. 
And that, I've had the same experience. I've met a lot of Absolutely. different people. You know, I think there's a lot of wonderful people to work with in the profession, which is why we're doing this to get more insight as to what the benefits are for, for anyone who chooses to participate as a student or to just grow as a professional. Um, so could you just give me a little bit of background about what led you to the profession of accounting? Can you hear me? Sure, I tell the story. Sure, yes. Can yeah. you hear me? Yeah, I think those sure. are. Uh, it was a funny story. I knew I wanted to be in the accounting profession from about sixth grade. There was a part-time teacher at my elementary school who had a lot of cash in her hand in her pocket one day. And I asked her, I said, what do you do to have so much money? And she said I was a tax accountant. That's what she said she was. And I knew from there I wanted to be in the accounting profession when I saw that wad of money. Um, <laughs> Funny story, although when I went to start my college career at Towson University, I changed my major from accounting to business administration because I didn't understand the opportunities that were available in accounting. I just thought accountant, typical bean counter. Right. I had no clue <laughs> as to the endless possibilities with our profession. So I actually changed my major when I was at Towson University okay. until I was employed at my first job with the federal government that I learned about auditing, specifically okay. the federal government. Um, and that's when I decided to go back to graduate school, and that's when I started my journey in public accounting. Okay, so then from there, what led to this decision to become a CPA specifically? So I've always been an overachiever, <laughs> I can tell. Uh -huh. um, and when I learned about accounting, but also learned about the CPA license and what that meant. That is the epitome of our profession. That is the epic achievement of our profession. And I said, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to be the best at it. And so. And I took the time and energy and focus to take all four parts, so much time of my life, but it was <laughs> <laughs> And went and got my CPA license. It was 10 years ago in January that I became licensed in the state of Virginia. Well, well, congratulations again. Happy anniversary, right? 10 years, wow, mm -hmm. that's good, that's good. Goes by fast. Wow, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm actually more recently minted as a CPA, but um, I've been kind of working in the profession, I would say for almost 10, I guess almost 10 years too myself, but just not um, actually certified until recently. That's a long story, different video. <laughs> but uh, so then uh, it's, funny <laughs> you say, it's funny you say that you, it, it was a lot of commitment, right? Because one of the things that I always love talking about when I do these interviews is what it takes to actually take the exam and pass it. And there's always interesting stories when it comes to that. So would you mind just sharing a little bit about what it took for you to study and actually pass? Sure, sure. So when I started my accounting career, I started in the middle of the Great Recession, 2008. Okay. Um, I luckily was able to keep my job. I wasn't let go when I started with KPMG. However, there wasn't much work at the firm. So I took the time and sitting on the bench, as we called it at the time. Mm -hmm. just, I brought my books, my materials, my CD-ROM, because that's what we had at the time. <laughs> and I spent eight hours a day, five days a week for about two months studying. I actually took three parts within a month and a half. Whoa, okay. Took advantage of the opportunity to take that study time. Uh -huh. My client work picked back up in the spring. I had to left the far left, which we all know. That's, that's the tough one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but even with that one, it still took commitment because I was back to working the normal eight to nine, ten hours a day. So my, my thing was I would get up on a Saturday morning, six, seven a.m. I would go to Panera. I was been eight to nine hours at Panera studying every Saturday for far. Wow. It's hard to study during the week with work. I still want to have some time to have a life. Um, yeah, every Saturday for about two months, that's what I did at Panera. It takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of time and focus. Mm -hmm. I initially underestimated the difficulty of the exam when I first took regulation. I definitely bombed it. Okay, okay. <laughs> take it again. For someone like me, I always got great grades in school. So I thought, oh, I'll study. I'll cram it in. It'll be yeah. fine. Oh, no, learn for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it takes a lot of work, time and energy and commitment, but it is so worth it. And when you're done with it, the benefits that you receive from it are life changing. Got it. Got it. And I'm glad to hear that because um, that's, that's the thing about it, right? It's like, there's a lot from what I've seen, there are students and there are professionals and they go into accounting, but then they hear about the CPA exam and they're just like, oh, it's, it sounds like a lot. I don't know. I don't really want to do it, but you got to understand the benefits that come from it. You know, the yes. level of respect that comes with the letters exactly. and the different opportunities that then get presented as a result of being a sort of being certified as a public accountant. Um, do you have any, and I know this might be some time, 
but is there anything specifically with the study process that helped you to retain information a bit more than um, normal just to, as you were preparing for a FAR versus like the other exams? Amazing question. There's a young lady I'm mentoring now and she's preparing to take her first part. And I said, one of the areas I've seen individuals struggle in is not knowing how they retain and learn information. Mm -hmm. Some people are auditory, they need to hear it to learn it. Mm -hmm and just see words on paper, photographic memory, and they got it. <laughs> like me, I'm a writer. I have to write it to remember. Ah, uh, okay. So people, that's the first thing you have to know is how did you learn and retain information, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two is understanding your best study environment. I've seen people, some people can't do the Panaris. It's too noisy, it's too crowded, it's too much distraction. For others like me, I couldn't do it at home. I find everything else in the world to do at home. Putting <laughs> at home was not for me. All right. So, would stay after work in the office to study because it was quiet right. go to a library. So you have to understand as well where you best learn, where you have the most peace, least distraction. Also, even the, the time of day. I'm a morning person. I'm an early bird. So for me, getting up in the morning, that was the best time for me. Others are night apps. They work better studying at night. So again, you have to know what works best for you. It's me, until you get those, uh, understand those three items and get those in place, it would be very difficult to be able to study and pass the CPA exam. You know, I'm glad you said that because um, everybody always has something very good to contribute about what the study process looks like. But you hit on something that I think is the most important part that I've always, if, any, if anybody's ever asked me, I always say this one thing. And it's not just the CPA, it's in general. When you're in school or not, and it's your environment, you have to have the right environment in order for, it's like for your mind to go into that switch and say, it's time to retain this information and lock it in. And, and not having the right environment, at least for me, and it sounds like for you as well, you, you'll be surprised how little you think that is important but how important it actually is like for me like i can't sit down like i can't be in bed and lay down and start trying to study something it's just not gonna happen i'm most likely just gonna go to sleep i have to sit up i have to be like ready to go and then i know my it's like my mind knows okay this it's this guy's serious right now and we need to wake <laughs> up uh, okay so that's very good that you said that and then another thing you did say too is time what time of the day does it work best because your mind will work a little bit better depending on what time of day is most Absolutely. used to, to getting information in. So thank you for sharing that. Those are great, those are great study tips. Uh, so then talk me through the exam when you took it, what did you feel like? What did you think was the, and then also just the sections and maybe what, which one was the hardest for you? Was it far? It sounds like you said far was the hardest. Greg was, because that's okay, the one sorry. I was <laughs> Let's say that was the last. Tell me about FAR. Tell me about FAR. Tell me about VC and uh, audit, and then we'll get to Ray. Sure. So FAR, it was, it was difficult. Again, it's a lot of information, not very deep, but a lot of information. Um, I'm not sure if I even finished all the simulation. So okay. I left the exam. I'm so nervous and scared. It was my last part. I've taken all the other three parts. Um, so we all know FAR can be a monster. Yes. But again, it's not impossible. Um, <laughs> BEC was pretty easy for me because at the time when I took it, there were no simulations at the time. Oh, okay. I, right before the simulations came in, tells you how long ago I took it. <laughs> that wasn't too difficult. Audit was pretty easy because I was doing audit at the time. So right. I was actually learning on the job. And it was great to learn it also from the CPA exam itself. Got the it. simulation was my most difficult. Tax was a killer for me. <laughs> I hate when people think that I'm a CPA and I do tax. No, I run away from tax. I don't even do my own taxes. <laughs> so I have so much respect to my fellow CPAs who are in the tax world. Power to you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not my area, not my lane. Then that's what I really had to do a lot of studying for. Mm -hmm. to take it for the second time to pass it. I think I may have gotten in the upper 70s. So that tells you it was still a struggle for me. Oh, man, we share some similarities there. Go ahead. <laughs> but I passed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, it's funny because uh, far, I mean, Reg is the only one I had to take twice. And it seemed like there's some type of... Uh, there. And then uh, I ha I did an interview with a, with a friend and former colleague of mine, uh, Felix. I don't know if you've seen that interview. But he yes. had to take Reg like four times. Oh, my goodness, right? <laughs> so I'm like, okay, okay. So reg is like seeming like that one section that you really got to buckle down for. And I know yes. the thing with me was, I like you, well, like you with FAR, I had gotten all of the exams done the first time. 
And then I did reg, and I remember I had a teacher who was like, are you feeling like you're ready for reg? And I was like, yeah, I got it. He's like, I don't know, right? <laughs> and then um, I, I really got a little bit too confident with reg, and I missed mm-hmm. it by a few points. And I was like, oh, wow. So I had to go back and do it as well again. So reg seems like the one where, and you're right. Every time I tell people I'm a CPA, and, and a lot of times it's because, you know, uh, they're, they're African-Americans, right? So they kind of just have this one-sided Yes. Uh, look at what a CPA is. It's always taxes. Can you help me with taxes? Can you help me with taxes? And it's so crazy because I, be, I want to tell them I can help, but I'm like, you know, my specialty is actually in this IT risk area, you know? Um, so I, and they don't really understand, like, what does that mean? Like, how do you not do taxes? So I can understand, I can understand when you say that too. And yeah, tax is definitely something that um, is a much, very respectable for any CPAs that are doing that. I just did an interview with uh, Ebony Moss, and she works mm-hmm. in the tax area, so she's definitely in that in that uh, side of things. Um, okay, so then you did reg. How many times did you take it? Just twice. Just this twice. Time? Okay, okay. Just twice. Just got by. All right, very good. So then, how did you feel when you finally got it? Was it was that before all the other professional certifications or what? So the first one, the CPA was the first one, and I'll never forget the day. Um, I was, we were still getting scores by mail. So I was waiting, you know, waiting patiently every day, checking the mail. <laughs> and I had just gotten back from uh, Orlando, Florida for international training with KPMG. Okay. And I saw the blue, uh, there's a blue envelope that came in the mail. And of course, I, my heart starts to beat. <laughs> it's coming out of my chest, thought I was going to puke. And I slowly open and rip it up. Um, and when I see that I pass, I definitely cry. That's the first thing I did was I cry. Wow. wow. Um, of course, I called my mother and told her the wonderful news. Yeah. After that, I went and got my study materials and threw them in the trash can. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I I remember that day like it was yesterday. Um, Just that feeling of relief that I did it Mm -hmm. is very difficult, but not impossible. Um, So I made myself proud. I know it made my family proud as well. Um, I know it made other Blacks within the profession proud as well. Um, Glad to join their ranks with them. I'm so happy about that. Right, right. Very good. Very good. I've heard of people doing that. Like, I don't want to look at these books ever again. <laughs> I still have mine, uh, just just because it's like I, I had a very special relationship with my study material. <laughs> very good. So, okay. So then, um, can you tell me, I'm going to jump into more of the certifications that you have, because I want to speak to those, but can you tell me your experience working with some of the big, large accounting firms? So it looks like you've worked with uh, KPMG and Grant Thornton, but you've also had experience working with IBM, right? Which is not an accounting firm, but a huge organization. Correct. And then currently your role is as a controller for a company in the DC area. Correct. So two part question. What was your experience like working with the big accounting firms? And then how did that experience help you with your current roles in that you serve right now? Sure. So working at KPMG and Grant Thornton, one thing I definitely remember was the training was impeccable. The training in person, the training, whether it's at the, the, the national level, the local level in your office, or even online training that was available. There was no shortage of being able to learn and go deeper in an area that you needed help with. Okay. You know, uh, testing a particular area, you know, accounts receivables, I can go get training on it, which was right. great. Right. Um, training that they offer, I, I haven't seen anything like it, which mm-hmm. is amazing. Um, the working at a larger firm, the various clients that you can work with. I mean, that's many great opportunities as well. So again, you're working with different clients, different teams, um, which is another great, I would say, great benefit of working at a, at a large firm. Mm-hmm. As you mentioned as well, I did spend some time at IBM. So not an accounting firm, but still a very large corporation and very similar. Great teams, great opportunities, great training as well. Mm-hmm. I did transition to a very small firm. So that was very different, yeah. <laughs> very large to a very small. And there are plus and minuses within both. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've I had people, many people have asked me, Jessica, like, do I have to work at a big four, you know, to be considered successful in the accounting profession? And I say, no. Are there great opportunities and great benefits that come from working at a larger organization or a larger firm? Definitely. I will. Uh, so, um, Based on what you were saying, I'm recording now. So based on um, what you were, you were just telling us about the benefits of working, the differences between working big firms, small firms, smaller corporation and, or company, and then um, what benefits have for you to have in your current position, in your current role, and what you do right now. Sure. So when I was at KPMG and Grant Thornton, the opportunities for training were tremendous. 
there was the national training, training at the local level within your office, and also training online. So there was no shortage of opportunities to be to learn and go deep on something that you had an interest in. When there's a particular area on the audit you were working on and needed to have a better understanding of, it was a very complex area. So that training, again, impeccable. Um, I'm very thankful for having that training. Also, all the various clients that you can work with, the various teams that you can work with. Again, I've always talked about even before the networking and the meeting of, with people and making connections and how beneficial that can be for one's career. Mm-hmm. So that was great for me as well. And even IBM, it wasn't an accounting firm, but still working at a large corporation such as IBM, again, great opportunity. Right. However, I did switch over to a small firm. Again, very different. And there's plus and minuses with both and everything isn't for everyone. And so I, I tell young students that are you know, coming out of college, you need to figure out what works for you. It may not be a large firm or it may not be a small firm. It may be more of a mid-sized to regional firm. Mm-hmm. There's plus and minuses and students ask all the time, Jessica, do I have to work at a big four to be considered to have a successful accounting career? And I say no. Yep. Again, so many ways you can have opportunities within our profession that it doesn't always have to be big four. Are right. there pluses that come with that? Absolutely. I would never deny that at all. But you can still make a great career path for yourself, even if you don't go the big four route. Got it. Got it. And I agree because I started a career at big four with EY. And there were definitely a lot of training was always fun. Very good. Um, You got to travel for training, right? Um, Yes. And then, you know, there was a lot of you get to work on the different bigger companies so that you work with the team. So I I really understand what that means as well. But then I left to a smaller firm. I worked for a couple smaller firms. And the, the, the beauty about that was. For me, I actually got to travel to different places at the smaller firms more than I did with the big firm because EY right. had like all these different offices. They didn't need you to be everywhere. But with the smaller firm, it's just that firm where they had clients everywhere. So I got to travel all kind of places. So I really had more of a travel, better travel experience with the smaller firms and the larger firms. So like you said, it really depends. You get different experiences from different from different yeah. opportunities. So um so then the training, does that, what does that help you? How, how does that help you right now in your current role? And what do you do as a controller? And this is going to be a learning experience for me because I've, I'm a CPA and I'm working in accounting, but I'm like, I've not ever had to deal with financial reporting or anything like that. So you get to just understand what that role entails. Sure. The, the training that you get, especially early in your career, that technical knowledge is so vitally important. Mm -hmm. That is the basis. That's how you begin your career is having to understand the technical aspects within the, whether you're in accounting, whether whether it's tax or even on the audit side. Mm -hmm. Um, So that having that base is great to start with. And that's why that training is so important. Mm -hmm. Um, You're right. I'm actually new to the financial reporting side. So I've been an auditor for 12 years. Okay. Okay. (laughs) So so now I'm on the other side. Right. uh, Working with the auditors currently for our financial statement audit now. So currently I'm dealing with uh, working through our year end close. Mm-hmm. We also have monthly codes, working with our auditors um, when it comes to our tax time and our 990 forms, preparing documents for our board, um, even making changes to processes and systems in an organization. So I feel like it's a pretty big hat with right. a lot of different pieces. Right. Um, but it's definitely it's interesting and new for me because, again, it's a new role and a new industry for me as well. So um, how has it been a learning curve over since you've uh, made the transition over from one side of the fence to the other from audit to financial reporting? There has been a learning curve, um, not from a, tr- a really technical perspective, even though my industry was different from right. before. Um, you know, the accounting is accounting, so some knowledge that no matter what you'll use and have. Right. Um, but it was just a different mindset right. of actually doing a lot of the work where the auditors, it's usually telling someone we're doing our testing and these are the areas that you need to improve on. These are right. our audit findings or you're on the other side of you actually need to make the changes and put, implement <laughs> them. <laughs> implement yeah. the recommendations from a finding. So that's been a learning curve and different for me as well. Um, but my organization appreciates my, my audit knowledge and my audit background and how that's right. beneficial for them. So I'm glad you brought that up and you say that because I did an interview with, um, with Elizabeth Barrison from the CAQ, Center for Audit Quality. And one of the things that she mentioned was that um, one of the things that they advocate for is how a career in audit can help you professionally with have, running a business and understanding the inner workings of a business. So could you just give me some um, kind of one-on-one personal experience with that and how a career in audit has helped you with this current role? 
Sure, because being an auditing, you have to understand many aspects of a business, and it's not just the numbers. There is the, the HR or the payroll aspect of the organization, the purchasing aspect of organization, the sales aspect of an organization, the IT aspect of an organization, why I got my CISA. Right. So you have to understand all facets of a business. It's uh-huh. actually more than just numbers. Right. It's way more than just numbers in what we do. Mm-hmm. And a lot of organizations, whether it's a, a company or you being on a board, they like that knowledge because you have to understand all facets of business. Um, and that's been beneficial for me, definitely. And that's, again, my, why my current employer um, wanted to me to come work with, for them because of how I look at things, the, 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 the critical thinking that I have, the questioning, the questioning mindset that I have. Right, of, right. Why are we doing this this way? Can't we do it better? Why should, yeah. we, why should we do it this way? Because that's what we do as auditors. We ask a lot of questions. Yeah. Um, we're supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> and we're supposed to. Yeah. Um, and so that's another reason why it is uh, that audit career is definitely beneficial, even for later on, if you do transition out of it. Very good. You know, my whole career has been basically an audit. So, um, I, 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 I can totally understand. Um, I like that you said it's way more than numbers. It definitely is way more than numbers. And that's the one thing that I think was a preconceived thought that I had about going into accounting mm-hmm. was, okay, well, you know, it's funny that you say what got me in accounting was that I saw one of my teachers at college. She had like a nice car and she was running businesses. And I was like, okay, whatever she's doing, I'm doing. Right. And then, um, <laughs> So you say you saw somebody with a lot of money and it's kind of the same thing because you think, I, you know, I just wanted to get into something where I knew I could make some money. And I thought to myself, if I'm counting money, then there has to be some type of correlation to get. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so it's, yeah, so uh, what I was going to say, the uh, it's more than just numbers because as I was in school, they would say, you know, you, there's so many opportunities in accounting. You can do this, you can do this, you can do this. And I was like, okay, you know, I'm open to it. But then I, my, my story is really a story where I went into accounting and I totally did nothing with numbers. It just never really has been <laughs> anything that had to do with numbers. So, you know, um, I get that. It definitely is more than just numbers. So then um, I'm going to speak to a special part of what we have in common, which is the CISA license, which people may not know a lot about, right? You know about the CPA and then you know maybe about some of these other more recognized like a law law degree, things like that. But the IT certifications that are out there now are increasingly more popular and definitely more relevant because of the world we live in and how technology has integrated into everything, even the profession of counting, so much to the point where now they've got the CPA, the AICPA has the CPA evolution um, initiative that they're doing where they're starting to incorporate more IT into and kind yes. of like developing that as a, like a specialty. So um, can Absolutely. you speak to me about the CISA license? What led you to decide you needed to become a CISA? And CISA is Certified Information Security Auditor. So basically you're looking at our system, systems auditor. So you're looking at yes. systems and you're auditing the systems. Could you just give me some background about that certification? Sure. So what got me into it was from the urging of a managing partner at a firm that I worked with. And at the time, he had mentioned to me to truly understand all the, your full entire audit. You have to understand what the IT team is doing on your audit, how that work impacts the scope of, not the scope, I would say, they, the testing that you need to do for your audit, the risks that are on your audit. You right. need to understand that. And one way to do that is to become a system. Mm. I said, okay, great. And again, I thought I got the CPA, had my CGFM, thought I was done <laughs> with all these certifications. <laughs> um, and I'm like, I am not an IT person. I struggle now with just doing things on my phone. So right. Lord knows I was not thinking about a, an IT certification. Right. Um, but I went after it and did it. And it's been very beneficial because not only did it help me understand the risk from an IT perspective on the audits at the time when I was doing auditing, I actually got to do SOC engagements as well, my attestation side. Got so it. that gave me a because they, on, they had your business process controls, which they want someone with a financial background to be a part of. And so I was able mm-hmm. to assist our IT teams on our audits from that perspective. So that's when I got into those, the SOC audit engagements as well. Got it, got it. And that was because you know, me and you talked previous to the recording, but yeah, that's kind of my specialty is the SOC reporting. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's very good, that's good. And um, it helps to, because systems are so important to processing financial information, you have to understand the risk associated with the information systems, the the computer systems, the computer applications that are processing the information because you want to be able to rely on it. And if there's something that's wrong with that, then you can rely on the numbers. Just for, as some background to our viewers, 
Um, so good, good. So then you've gotten the CISA and there's a whole other career path outside of just the CPA associated with the CISA and ISACA and the different cert yes. professional certifications that they have. Um, one of the things that I saw that you did was you wrote an article for ISACA talking about um, how digital, how computer systems help with the hiring process, right? So yes. you've been involved with ISACA as well. I mean, you're just doing all kinds of things. So I'm, <laughs> Uh, it's very inspirational for me, too, because as a professional, I want to get my hands and my legs out there and do more. Um, this is part of this is part of that process. But um, it's definitely you have all these organizations that you get involved with when you become certified AICPA with the CPA license, ISACA when you get your sister license. And then I'm sure there's the other the what, project management institution with the exactly CFP, and then yes. um you got your cf this one i always have to slow down with <laughs> so it was that certified Correct. government financial manager or something manager. Like that? exactly you okay got so it. then that's about government accounting uh state local and federal um exactly so have you so so working with the government have you done much of that as far as like uh what, what kind of experience have you had to work with the government so that was the most majority of my career thus far for the first 12 years, um, auditing federal um, agencies. Um, and so the CGF Kim, CGFM comes from the Associated Government Accountants, again, okay. specializing in financial management at the state, local, and federal level. Mm -hmm. So that's all I did for 12 years was just in the government space. Um, okay. And now I've transitioned to the not-for-profit space. Okay. Okay. That, oh, wow. So there, I'm sure there, you have to have some really good technical understanding of things when you're dealing with government because I know that they're yes. really strict. <laughs> A different yeah. world, a way of to do accounting a bit. <laughs> do you feel like it's a little bit less, uh, it's a little, you can relax a bit more in this new role or is it kind of still the same as far as uh, the comfort level? Uh, I don't like to get comfortable. So I don't want to ever be comfortable. Um, if, I'm not, if I'm comfortable, I'm not growing, I'm not learning. And so the minute I feel comfortable, it's time to do something else, whether it's other responsibilities within my current role or changing my role. Um, so I never want to be comfortable. That's good. I'm glad you said that. that I agree with that. You're right. Because if you're not, if you're comfortable, then you're not growing. Good. Okay. So how about this? We've talked a lot about this, the, the, technical part, the, the financials, the CPA, all the things that come with the license. Now, I want to try to segue into um, diversity and inclusion and your experience working at these different companies, ha on the different teams that you've had, and the amount of diverse, diverse that, uh, individuals that you've seen in your career. Do you feel like you've seen a lot of diversity? Do you feel like there's a lot more work we could be doing? Kind of, and I know you're serving on some boards and you have some leadership roles in this space. So could you just kind of speak to me about your experience working in your profession and then also what you are doing now to kind of help with this, uh, with this initiative? Sure. So we definitely have some work to do and continuing to do within our profession when it comes to diverse individuals within accounting. Um, one thing I will say, part of it is to me begins as a pipeline issue. Um, many of our underrepresented minorities, our people in our black and brown communities are not exposed to the accounting profession, maybe until college for a lot of us, um, where our majority of white counterparts are um, understanding it from um, childhood. Maybe there's a, a parent's family friend that's within the profession or they're exposed to accounting class in, in high school. Mm -hmm. um, and because of that, not many of our black and brown uh, students even major in accounting and not many of them even finished and get their degrees within the accounting, uh, accounting degrees as well. So it definitely is a, a pipeline issue in having our black and brown students understand accounting and that is not just tax, it's not right. just number crunching. Right. Um, so that's one area that <clears throat> the work I do with the student recruitment committee with the AICPA is helping bridge that and understand, bring that pipeline um, and increasing it at the high school and college level for, for all students. Um, and they're not even just minorities, but we know that's definitely an area that we need to focus on. Got it. Um, with the work that I do, so that's in one area. I also do work with on the AICPA's Women's Initiative Executive Committee, mm -hmm. um, where we're working with, again, women's issues within the profession. Um, I've had some various issues, not necessarily just as a, an African-American woman, but as a mother. I became mm -hmm. a mother about a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. and there were definitely some, some difficulties and some hurdles that I experienced as a woman within our profession, and there's another area we still need to do some work on as well. And you're right, I am all about diversity, equity, and inclusion with our profession. Um, I want to see more of us. 
right, right. within the profession, more of us becoming CPAs and having other certifications. So there's a National Society of Black CPAs, and our number one goal is to increase the number of Black CPAs. We're about 1% or less, mm -hmm. um, and that number hasn't changed in decades. Mm -hmm. decades yes, yes, yes and so this organization was newly formed uh back in june and it's all about the resources and, and making sure our black and brown students are not just finished and get degrees in accounting and into the accounting profession but yep. get that cpa license yes um so i i've enjoyed supporting the organization thus far uh -huh. um, and everything that they're doing to increase that number so we have a lot of work to still do yeah. Um, I'm glad with a lot of the unrest and what's been going on recently has definitely opened the eyes of many organizations. And I mentioned it in an article a couple of weeks ago. There's no more excuses for organizations that don't understand and believe that it's important to have this diversity, equity and inclusion. And that if the changes aren't made, they need to be held accountable and there should be repercussions for it financially and reputationally. And I stand by that 100 percent. OK, very good. Very good. I agree. You're right. It's about accountability. Um, it's about making sure that there are opportunities and that we are encouraging people to pursue them and trying to support them in their in their effort to uh, benefit and have these and engage and seek out the opportunities and take advantage of them. So, um, and that's what a lot of this CPA diversity was spawned from, specifically from the different um, recent um, the different recent things going on in our community and in our world uh, with the Black Lives Matter movement kind of starting and then reigniting again and just really kind of building on old civil rights issues and human rights issues and just thinking to myself, you know, this this has always been something in my head, CPA diversity. It's like, hey, I, I want to do something so that way we can um, encourage more people to get into the profession of accounting because me as, a, as an African-American, um, and as an African-American man, I've always been like the only black guy in the room, right? Um, and just kind of looking around and saying to myself, well, why is it that I'm, I see a lot less brown, uh, black and brown individuals doing this profession, you know? And it's really a big difference. And like you said, it's been um, about, I guess, what, less than 1%, 1% to 2%, and that number has not changed for decades. So what we need to do more, and this is just one piece of it, me doing this, but there are so many people already doing things, so many organizations already doing things. Um, we, and it's just going to take everybody doing their part, right? Exactly. So uh, that's what this is all about. And I'm, and I'm glad that we're having this discussion because I hope that somebody takes this and says, you know what, there seems to be a lot of opportunity within the profession of accounting for someone like me. And I really want to go in and, and, and focus and, and, and pursue this because there is if you do become somebody who is of an underrepresented population in this profession then you're rare i mean you're so rare and, and companies are looking for pe not just because you are you know african american hispanic american asian american but just because they do want to have a more diverse background of people who are in getting involved in helping with the things that they have to do right because we have different backgrounds different education different experiences which help to, to solve problems so um that is definitely uh, good. I mean, I'm glad to hear some of the things that you're doing to participate in, in, in move that, and move this forward. Um, I was gonna ask, so um, what do you think needs to be done other than like for, like for, for individuals themselves to, to help with getting, inspiring more people to study, get these certifications, and 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 grow and increase the number of of successful um, ethnic diverse people who are in the, the accounting profession. What do you think individually we need to be doing to help with that effort? Gosh, it's a, it's a great question because there's many things we can do with different aspects. So, like the first thing I had mentioned before was exposing African American young people to the accounting profession early on. Right. Um, in, in, in high school and helping them understand it's not just number crunching, it's not just doing taxes, exposing them to what possibilities are out there within accounting when they're teenagers, when they're in college. Uh, we already know that African Americans don't always graduate the same number and the same rate as, as our white counterparts. Mm -hmm. So getting them into, the, in, getting in, into college, supporting them throughout college within their, obtaining their degrees and having them finish. 
And it's another place as well, helping them to get internships, which are very important, exposing them to the, the interview opportunities, the career fair opportunities, the networking there as well. When they're finished, getting into the pipeline of actually being in the profession and getting the CPA. Mm -hmm. It's another area we're working on as well. Um, I know the AI CPA, they're providing scholarships for the CPA exam. The National Society of Black CPAs, we're working to do the same thing as well because not all employers pay for the resources to become a CPA. And becoming right. a CPA is expensive. It is an investment. Mm -hmm. And not everyone has the financial means to do that. And so that's another thing we could be doing is, is providing that financial assistance to individuals that want to pass. Right. Providing them the information, understanding the path to becoming a CPA, because parts of it are they're different in different states. Right. Right. How you do it in Virginia could be different how you do it in New York or California. Right. Um, and providing that mentoring as well. Mentoring is very important. And even as people move up their career path, making sure organizations are providing everyone equal opportunities, because that's what this is about. Right. Just be. Um, I know from speaking from the perspective of being a mother, just because I'm a mother doesn't mean I'm less committed to my career. Right. Don't make assumptions that I don't want to travel or I don't want this difficult task or difficult um, job right. or client because of my family obligations. And so removing that unconscious bias, I know we probably people have talked a lot about that, especially recently, uh -huh. of getting all of us those opportunities and not making assumptions for people. Right. Because we can get a lot of people into the profession but it's the issue we've seen is getting the diversity moving up, the, moving up that ladder to whether it's the partner levels, your CFOs, your VPs at companies as well. Very good. Very good. That, that was a, a lot of good recommendations for things that we could be doing because you're right. You know, the one thing that we, that I often too forget is how long it does take for you to go on that road from being a student to then being a CPA because there it's a journey. It's, it's you have to graduate and go to college first, right? And at least to get your credits, or you can have the experience where you're working for years to kind of substitute for the, mm -hmm. for the for the education. But most people, I think, go down the the path of like, okay, you have to go, you go to college, you get your degree, you get your certain amount of credits. Then once you do that, you can have to start the study process for the exam and then actually pass. And then after that, there's a certain amount of years you need to work under a CPA before you can actually become certified and be and have your license. So it's not just like, hey, I take a test and I'm a CPA now. No, there's like, there's there, it's steps to this thing. It's a really, but I yes. think the good thing about it is, and maybe it's designed that way is because once you come out on top out, and you're actually licensed, you have so much foundation under it. You have this educational experience, the study process, understanding it and seeing on books, but then also seeing it in the real world so that you could actually take that knowledge, see it yes. applied, and then be able to say, I'm certified. I understand not only because I passed the test, but I've also seen it in practice. Absolutely. So it's definitely an investment, like you say. Um, I wanted to ask because your one thing you did mention was the National Association of Cert Certified Black Public Accountants, right? Mm -hmm. And there being a more recently new um, organization that's helping with getting more African American CPAs in the profession. I, I just actually got approved as a member last week because I saw it. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, I saw I saw it on LinkedIn and I was like, oh man, wow, this is great because this is something that I definitely want to do and be a part of. And then like I just applied and I got in. But um, have you had any like I haven't had much experience yet with working with the organization at all. I'm just really kind of freshly new as a member. Have you had any interaction with the organization and do you do you play any roles? Like what what's your relationship with that organization right now? Absolutely. I remember the first call that we had before they uh, became an official 501c3. So I actually helped with the awards committee. Um, there's yeah. various committees where they come to be on board, CPA candidates, um, awards, communications, governance. There's a lot. So there's a lot of opportunities for individuals to get involved. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I encourage you to do that. Okay. Find a committee to sign up for if you have time. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I help with the awards committee and that's what I've been doing. Um, Specifically with that area, two parts, I'd say two things we're looking at. One is we're trying to put a scholarship together um, to help to cover the cost of becoming, again, becoming a CPA because it can be expensive and right. everyone doesn't have the financial means to do it or employers that are willing to pay for it. Right. Um, but also the recognition out there within the accounting profession for various awards and getting our members recognized and our name out there right. and what our members are doing um, and, and highlighting that as well. So we have great leadership within the organization who are 100% dedicated and committed uh -huh. to making this, this happen. So we cannot wait until <laughs> we see the numbers move from the number of black CPAs. And I'm glad to support in any way I can. 
Good, good, very good. I'm excited to learn more about what, what's going to happen with the uh, organization and definitely the progress that I know is going to come as a result. I, I've been kind of keeping my eyes and ears out for, you know, professionals, organizations that have been focusing on this topic specifically. Um, and I'm starting to see a lot more of it now. Maybe it's because of all the discussion that we've been having about equality in our country and in our world. Um, but I'm really liking what I see. And, you know, they, they showed up as some, they were, you know, there was like this post, we need more black CPAs. I just like recently with CPAs, I'm like, okay, I'm in, I'm in. Like, what can I do, you know? Um, so it's good. It's good. I'm glad to see that there's a lot of people who have, un who understand, we see that the numbers are low and they've been low for a long time. And what we need to do, whatever we can to contribute to making this uh, much more, much more diverse and a lot more beneficial to every to to the community right into the to the exactly. culture so absolutely um i was gonna say um so for that organization and getting involved if you're a cpa what do you just need to do you just need to do the the, the application process and then um you have to already have passed the exam right so there's actually different types of membership levels. So we have it for candidates as well that are working to become CPAs or full members who are already CPAs. And there's stipulations as far as how you can, if you can be a committee chair or serve on the committee. So it's not just that you have to be a CPA. Okay. Uh, we're looking for CPA candidates as well because a lot of our resources are going to help our CPA candidates um, in, in addition to our current CPA members as well. Good, good. I'll put a link to the website, I guess, in, in the video, so that way people know where to go and they can get All it. Right. Is, is, is the National Association of Certified Black Public Accountants any connection to NASBA at all? Is there any relationship there as far, or not, was it NASBA that issues the certifications for CPAs? No, so it's the National Society of Black CPAs, and so okay. there is no association right. Right. yet. Got it. Got um, it. So again, just newly formed, and we, we're on a mission. I'm putting, we're on a mission. Good, good, <laughs> good. I'm glad. I'm glad that. Okay, um, so then we talked a lot about um, diversity, your professional experience and your career, um, and then your, the certifications that we that you hold. Um, what do you think, what would you give, what kind of advice would you give to, for one, a student who is right now in school and maybe they don't understand why we're talking about doing this and maybe they're deciding, you know what, I'm gonna take this on. Um, but it, I know it's gonna, it sounds like it's gonna be a lot of work. Um, what, what advice would you give to them to help keep them motivated, keep them going and pursuing in a career in accounting, in, in audit, in tax, or in one of the areas that um, the accounting profession has? And what career, what kind of advice would you give for them to maintain the success throughout their uh, student life and their professional life? Sure. So one of the, the big things is making sure they understand, again, the opportunities in the profession. Um, the ICP has a website called Start Here, Go, Go Places. Yep. And it talks about the various, again, Oh my gosh, whether it's audit, tax, if, you're, if you want to work in the banking industry, insurance uh, industry, the not-for-profit realm, um, again, we're doing the tax, the audit, the IT now, there's data analytics, um, right. there's a big infusion of technology within our profession. And so that's the first thing is making sure they understand what the possibilities are and get rid of the notion of it's just, a, it's just numbers and it's just tax. <laughs> right, right, right. That's the first thing. Um, having them talk to their professors. Um, going informational interviews, going to uh, career fairs within a course now it's virtual. Um, right. But for just understanding what out, what is out there and what is available is, is definitely a big one. Um, as I mentioned before, not being comfortable. Yeah. And that's when your college career and that's also within your professional career. But I do have to be mindful and say this because there's such a thing called burnout. Right. And I've experienced it. Right, right. <laughs> so we have some of us that are just go, go, go all the time and got to keep achieving everything. We don't right. want to sit still. We don't want to be comfortable, comfortable. But at the same time, we have to make sure we're taking care of ourselves, mm -hmm. um, that we're taking care of our family and friends and our community as well. So that having that balance is going to be a big word people talk about a lot within our profession is balance. Right. Some people say work-life balance. Some people say work-life integration. I believe it's definitely different for different people. Right. Um, so not being comfortable, but at the same, same time, again, making sure you have time for that self-care and time for self-reflection, which is very important um, as well. Um, and also just being open-minded and open to different opportunities, whether it's a particular client at a firm you're working for, whether it's a job that you may not have thought about pursuing as right. well. 
uh, different type of certification. So just being open-minded to what's out there. And as our profession changes because of technology, there's opportunities that don't exist now that will exist in five years, that will yeah. exist in 10 years. Right. Uh, and, and being open-minded to that as well, because I can only imagine what this career would look like 10 years from now when I'm still working, maybe 30 years from now when I'm still working <laughs> and what it will have to offer, um, offer us in the profession. Good, good, very good. I think that's great. I think that's good for students and professionals to so just keep an open mind. Always pursue opportunities. Try not to be comfortable um, because outside of your comfort level is your growth, right? Exactly. And then, um, and then uh, just, just continue to stay focused, right? Um, I think those are all good lessons, and I really, really appreciate you participating and contributing and, and really just giving this for the viewers for CPA Diversity. I think that this is going to be a great, great video for them to listen to, to get your story and, and to get your experience, which will help them understand what they can do and the possibilities that are out there for them. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much. Um, well, I want to say thank you. I got to get this and I got to say thank you. Uh -huh. It is great to have another voice of an African-American in our, in our profession have, doing these kind of interviews, speaking up for what needs to be changed within our profession, showing the opportunities that are there. So I want to thank you for putting this interview together. And I wish you much, much, much success in the future. Thank of other you so interviews much for well. that. Thank <laughs> you so much for that. Yeah, you know, it's, it's still new for me and I'm working on top of doing this. So I really am trying to find that balance between keeping this going, <laughs> making it beneficial, making it, making it valuable for the viewers, but then also, you know, we have to maintain our personal lives and professional lives on top of that. So uh, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I appreciate you wishing the success for the channel. I wish the same for you and everything you do. And I'm sure we'll collaborate more as we go into the future with National Association of National Society of Certified Black Public Accountants. I'm trying to get involved more with AICPA. I've got some things going on, so we might cross paths there. And just in general, I'm sure <laughs> you're in DC. I've not ever been to DC, but if I ever, I have a friend who just moved there, not too, not too far from there. And if I do okay. get there, then I definitely will maybe do my best to reach out and see if we can connect in person as opposed to virtually. But oh, I am looking for COVID to be over so we can yeah, I see people in person again. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's a different world we live in, but um, different is not always so bad. I know this is not necessarily the best circumstances, um, but we're definitely looking forward to a bright, bright opportunities in future. Um, okay, so with that being said, Ms. Jessica McLean, thank you so much for participating. Thank, uh, you. thank you so much. We appreciate it. And I know there's going to be a lot more that you have to offer uh, to the community to the world and to, um, you know, our, to this initiative. So I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs>